Hey, back at it again. Um, so but I want to talk about Roberta Blevins, and then I'll I'll circle back to Aaron B's. But I just really want to um, focus on the sources of this inf- misinformation and basically the people that are trying to spread this so hard. And that would be Roberta Blevins, and that would be Robert L. Fitzpatrick. If you look across the internet, they have been trying to push this narrative and millions of videos, interviews, articles, and do they really know anything um, and about business? It just seems like it's a lot of conspiracy theories going around and it is damaging a lot of people just to make a quick buck, you know, so or get some views and it's so dangerous. And this is why I hate social media in the sense that ideas can spread so far and then can evolve into bullying. Roberta Blevins is in the background. She is. But she is the matriarch of all of this. Does she know anything, though? Let's get into her, okay? I want to go into one interview. I just really see what she's about, okay? All the road made me feel so good about me and had boosted my self-confidence. I feel like I found my place again with, you know, with Little Road and everything. These women... Someone would go, there's a sale tonight, and everything was like, sold, 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 sold next, sold next, sold next. 25 people want this pair of leggings. She only had three pairs. This is crazy. This is selling out like crazy. Here I am, 35, 36 years old, and I was on my way to be a millionaire. Instantly, I had this huge network of women who just wanted nothing but the best for me. I love you guys. You're amazing. Hearts everywhere. Everything they did was just it. Every party I've ever been to, very elaborate. Felt like the best person ever. You felt like a celebrity. The quicker you rise, the harder you fall. And I fell. You tell the people you love they're in a pyramid scheme, and they go, no, I'm not. You're just a hater. I own my own business. I'm very successful. My orders would smell disgusting. It was just insane the amount of hoops I had to jump through to get them to ever admit that their product was faulty. (coughs) I would sometimes open bags, and they'd be wet. You have to look a certain way. You have to be a certain way. People talk in the company, and you would be like, well, where's so-and-so? And they'd be like, oh, you didn't hear? Oh, they went and got the surgery. Surgery, bypass, pills, weight loss. They did everything in Mexico. Everything. Oh, my gosh. There's so many conspiracy theories in just a couple minutes. I've been trying so hard not to pause. But if we remember when Lula Roe came out, but even around that time period, leggings were the craze. Leggings did not exist before a certain time period. And when they came out, everyone went hard. Lula Rose prints are kind of ugly. <laughs> Just going to be honest. And they had a rise and a fall. As leggings did. And that's just how business works. It was a, all the hype. And I just really want you guys to listen to the things that they're saying. And then they would come back and girl be snatched. Be snatched. The more I shared my story, the more friends unfriended me. They invested all their hard earned money for you guys. And you guys screwed them. All I wanted to do was sell some clothes. is a clothing company that empowers moms and everyday women to sell their colorful clothing on social media or at pop-up parties. Back in 2013, Lularoe had just started out and became known for their leggings, often brightly patterned and described as buttery soft. Now, Lularoe sells all types of clothes in different patterns and prints. What's different about Lularoe is that you could only buy their clothes from at-home sellers, who are referred to as consultants in the company. Headquartered in Corona, California, Lularoe was started by married couple Mark and Deanne Stidham. 
the company started kicking off. And by employing their at-home sellers, they made $2.3 billion in sales. LuLaRoe became more than just a clothing company. It became a lifestyle. Being part of the LuLaRoe family meant big incentives, cruises, conventions, private concerts with celebrities like Katy Perry and Kelly Clarkson. This is a story following three women who paid the $5,000 minimum to start down the path of a LuLaRoe fashion consultant. Okay, pay attention. They paid $5,000. I don't know how true this is, but that would be $5,000 in product, right? Every order will come with a free pair of leggings. Hey. Um, and if they ain't cute, then they're pajama leggings. And if they're really not cute, um, then they're dog scarves. Right? Meet <laughs> Roberta Blevins. She's a mom living in San Diego, California. She first heard about LuLaRoe through a friend she met online. Roberta was curious about it, so she started looking to the company herself. I started calling into these opportunity calls that they would have. And all of these women were talking about all the success they were having and all of the friends and, and this sisterhood that was so empowering. I was getting very like motivated, like, I can do this. I can sell leggings on the internet. This is easy. In 2015, the owner, Deanne, would be on these opportunity calls. They would be live and she would be talking. And I thought that was amazing that the owner of this company would take time out of her day, her busy day, to sit on a phone call with women and empower them. And you choose to be lifted by one another and everything is up in a place where you can make your life better. LuLaRoe marketed themselves as a family-oriented company and would be an opportunity for part-time work for full-time pay. The idea of making your own schedule and making new friends through social media attracted many moms like Roberta. Despite her husband's doubts, she found a team and paid close to $7,000 for her first package. I didn't have friends because my daughter was so young and I was stuck at home. And then instantly I had this huge network of women who just wanted nothing but the best for me. They became like sisters. Every single time anything good happened, I had an entire brigade of women behind me that were like, go you. And I was like, yes. And it felt amazing. And then we've got white and purple. That's Amelia number 10. Feeling the love, Roberta quickly became a part of the LuLaRoe world. She was live streaming on Facebook two to four hours a day and customers would watch and shop. She was doing all the things they told her to do to be successful including buying a lot of LuLaRoe. I was told constantly to reinvest what I made into my, back into my inventory until I got to a place in my inventory that I was comfortable. And I said, I don't really know what that means. I might. Yes, that makes sense if you're in business. Um, you have to keep reinvesting your money so you can start earning a profit. So she started off 7000 in the drain. So she sold something. Yeah, there's some profit, but she's still in the negative, right? So she has to keep selling till she's in the positive, making profit. My upline would say, well, I would say between five and 10 pieces in each size of every style you carry. And so my inventory just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and really got big. But my upline kept saying, yes, 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 that's the, you're in the sweet spot. You're exactly where you want to be. You can't sell a ton if you don't have a ton. Two. And that is completely true. So we heard at the beginning that the only place Lula Rowe was selling was at the home seller, like the plate, like at the home, basically, of their sellers. So basically, the sellers had to have their own stores. So yes, you have to have all the sizes if you want to provide for anyone provide for everyone and anyone two leftover classics and two leftover carlies if anybody is looking for anything like that um and then i have 30 pairs of, of tc and 30 pairs of os so there's like so much stuff you guys um in lularoe the ranks are trainer and then coach and then mentor so to hit trainer you have to have 10 people underneath you and those people started recruiting people 
and then my tree went from like me with a few people to this massive tree of people joining under people joining under people joining under people and at the height of it I had 75 girls underneath me for me I am a total like you tell me there's a prize and I'm gonna get that prize and so when I found out I got a cool watch that I could show off and be like, oh, look at me, I'm a trainer, you know? I was like, I need that watch. This picture. Okay. Mama and Papa Row. <laughs> ah! So thank you for being the kind of leader that you would follow. And I got my watch. Ah! Look at my watch. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. These yeah. are the last of the maxis right here. And it just felt so empowering and so wonderful. And I was somebody in LuLaRoe, you know, like that's how it felt. I was completely addicted to dopamine, getting a sale, sold 88, whew, dopamine, getting a new box, whew, dopamine, give me more. And I remember my upline going, oh, you'll hit coach, no problem. You'll hit mentor. You'll be mentor by this time next year. Yeah, it sounds like your whoever was above you was motivating you, encouraging you, and you were encouraged, you were motivated. I don't know why she's saying dopamine and stuff like that, like it's a negative thing. But yes, if you're, everyone was really excited about this company and doing this. It was a hype. For Roberta, things were at an all-time high. Across the country in Greenville, North Carolina, Courtney Harwood was also part of LuLaRoe. She joined almost a year before Roberta and reached the coveted status of mentor, which was the highest rank in the company. Courtney built a team of 3,500 women beneath her and collected monthly commissions that were called bonuses. When I hit trainer level, which is the first level, my bonuses were anywhere from around five to $10,000 a month. When I hit coach, my first coach check was around 11 or 12,000 and got all the way up to 20 ish thousand dollars a month. And when I hit mentor, my checks got into the 30,000 per month and my highest bonus check was $51,000 per month. That was my way to being a millionaire. Pictures of the kids. Yeah, that sounds all good. Why is she so mad though? Obviously, we gotta keep listening. But something happened with LuLaRoe. Maybe it wasn't the hype anymore, right? They really do have ugly prints. So let's keep listening. I took that. <laughs> yeah. Seven. To get our bonus checks, we had to buy enough inventory. We would sometimes get a field report and it would have how many items you had bought for the month. And then if under it, it would have your directs and you got 5% commission off your directs. So whatever they had bought for the month, they really pushed recruiting. Not so much sales at all. Recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. And they even said, if it's a warm body, take them. In LuLaRoe, when you recruit someone, you get 5% of the money they spent on their orders as long as you yourself order 175 pieces. When you reach trainer level, in addition to making 5% from your direct recruits, you also get 3% from their recruits orders. You only qualify for this bonus if your entire team orders at least 1,750 pieces in total. The chain continues as more people are recruited, and this is how people at the top of the chain, like Courtney, made much more money on recruiting people rather than selling. According to guidance issued by the Federal Trade Commission, one of the telltale signs of a pyramid scheme is when a company promises you'll make money from recruiting others to join, rather than selling the product. Okay, we've gone over this. You, for it not to be a pyramid scheme, you should still be able to make money by selling the product, that there's a product that exists, and you don't necessarily have to focus solely on recruiting. There is nothing bad with recruiting. And then also there's a 70-30 rule. Um, it's a general rule, and if it's more like the FTC will look into it and see if there's real business being conducted and no one is being scammed. Obviously, this 
interview is meant to elicit um, some fear. So, let's see. What does this say? They promise, uh, They all share one overriding characteristic. They promise consumers or investors large profits based primarily on recruiting others to join their program, not based on profits from... Oh, my gosh. Not based on profit profits from any real investment or real sale of goods to the public. So that would be a pyramid scheme. And there is no profits from any goods to the public. But we know they are selling leggings. Um, and leggings are being sold. So why are they even saying this? Now, a multi-level marketing company can recruit people and be a legitimate business. The issue, according to the FTC, is whether you are making money solely from what your recruits purchase rather than sell. In order for more people to rise up in the Lulu... No, 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 no. It's if the whole company is just focusing on recruiting. Not just one person. One person can focus on recruiting. That's fine. There's still product being sold. The row ranks, more sellers need to be recruited and more clothes needed to be ordered. To attract people to the company, mentors and other leaders were asked to live their best life and show it. As a mentor, you were put up on this pedestal. I was invited to speak at a state a couple of times and to fly on the corporate jet, their private plane. I trusted that they had our best interests at heart. I mean, I jokingly called the owner Mama D. She, I felt like she was a second mom to me. I felt like she cared so much. And say, yeah, you do trust them. They're writing your bonus check. You're not going to bite the hand that feeds you. Everything seemed to be going so well. For LuLaRoe, they were onboarding tons of people and had a growing army of 80,000 sellers. For Courtney, she was making way more money than she ever did in her corporate job. She was even able to start paying off her debt. But by the summer of 2016, things started to break. We were growing so fast. I don't think the system was big enough. Lachey Benson was one of the people. So they had 80,000 sellers, right? That's a lot of sellers. And remember, I just talked about what market saturation means, um, which means that so there's so many sellers and they're selling to so many people that maybe there's not that many people that want to buy anymore. They already have their leggings and and this is what happens. So the kind of the hype goes down. Um, yeah hired by LuLaRoe to onboard new recruits. She worked in the company's headquarters where she saw a lot of things, including where the clothing was stored. Girl, we get stuff delivered all the time and we wouldn't have enough room in the warehouses. There would be stacks of clothes sitting outside for days. They were strictly about getting their money and that's it. Yeah, I mean, this happens in business. As in, they probably didn't expect for it to be such of a such a hype, and they're trying to capitalize on that hype. Uh, maybe they weren't prepared for all the leggings at that time. And yes, it does um, run into quality issues, and that's probably what led to their demise, um, not planning. Um, and then basically lowering their customer satisfaction and that has bad consequences for a business. Multi-products started becoming more and more common. Sellers were receiving clothes with holes, wet clothes, and even moldy clothes. Roberta was also getting defective clothing, but was asked to stay mama. The number one mistake that people make when registering a business, they don't get a virtual mailbox before about it. I received this is nothing new in business. Of course, they don't want you to talk negative, negatively about their company. Um, again, these kind of problems happen everywhere. Like I said, I have worked in a lot of jobs and I have seen a lot of disgusting things. I have worked in restaurants and I have seen someone use the same gloves to wipe the uh, floor and then make a sandwich for somebody. I have dropped a whole pail of rice on the floor and the owner told me to scoop off the top um i've seen waitresses 
not wash your hands their whole shift and put your straw in your drink. A lot of disgusting things happen in business. If anything, just stay inside, okay? At least four different shipments spaced out through the summer of 2016 that had either disgustingly wretched, stinky leggings in them or soaking wet leggings. So she's only talking about four shipments in the summer of 2016. So it sounds like they had a bad summer. So I don't know why she, why it's so negative for them to have. Obviously, they weren't doing good, and it happened for a period of time. And yeah, that's what happens. All three of these pairs that I got were soaking wet. They came soaking wet. Here is the tag. And so I reached up to my upline. And our team page and I said hey I got these leggings and they're soaking wet has anybody else gotten soaking wet leggings this is really weird they smell like mildew and I remember like it being deleted and then getting an instant message from my sponsor going oh no 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 you can't post that kind of stuff because it's negative and <laughs> other people will see it and they might have second thoughts about joining Lularo. In April 2017, LuLaRoe implemented a buyback policy, which guaranteed consultants 100% of their money back for all unsold merchandise and covered shipping and handling. The policy had no expiration. There wasn't a time frame in which you had to buy the clothes. The only stipulation was that you had to have purchased them directly from LuLaRoe. With this in mind, Deborah Goldman from Rhonda, North Carolina, joined LuLaRoe in May of 2017 and spent $5,000 on her onboarding package. Unfortunately, she soon felt like the cards were stacked against her. You would open the boxes and it would smell like old food. Some of it would have spots on it and some of it would come in and you would open the packages and it would be wet. And here I am. Want some clothes? Um, I'm so kind of confused as to why she has all the clothes and they're so mildewy and she just has them hanging out right there. It kind of seems like she didn't know how to sell them off. You can also go to the flea market, wash them all off, and just sell them at the flea market for $2 a piece. Why do they all have their old clothes? Doesn't give, I mean, like, it doesn't seem like they knew how to get it off their hands. Air. I have a pair that a customer gave. Oh yeah, a customer bought these to wear to Disney World. She was really upset because that's what her leggings did. See that? Your fingers go right through. Yes, yeah, it's not about fit. There could have been a lot of quality issues happening in the company. I don't. I I I could agree and it happens in a lot of companies and I've bought many bad pairs of leggings. Nothing new. Um, the kind of, um, let's see, not fabric. The thread, maybe. Um, it's cheap. It has to be stretchy. It has to be elastic. Yeah. I mean, we're talking tiny little people can put these on and the same thing happens. Lularo used to, when I first started, they had a defective or damages policy that all you had to do was like take pictures and then email it to them and they would send you replacements and all you had to do was like basically swear you know on your honor that you were going to throw the things away this is usually what happens in companies at the beginning they do stuff like that but then they switch it up because they notice people are taking advantage of it i think in amazon it used to be like um, yeah, you could take a picture of the item or something like that, and then they'll, they'll just send you a new one, and not, you know you have a even. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. And you don't even have to send back the item. I'm sure a lot of people were taking advantage of that, and Amazon does not have that anymore. And they also used to Amazon also used to pick up your returns right from your house. Now you have to drop them off at FedEx. A lot of returns were happening and a lot of money was lost. So this is not uncommon in business. Way. 
Then they changed this whole policy with the damages that you have to keep everything until you have 15. Less than six months after implementing the 100. Yeah, that would make sense because shipping is expensive, sending them back and forth. So yes, you may have to have 15 and then send them back. Uh, it, yeah, things change like that in companies. 100% buyback policy, LuLaRoe abruptly ended it, claiming the retailers were abusing the program. Deborah heard from other LuLaRoe sellers, they returned their merchandise and months later were still waiting for their refund. She didn't want to risk it, so she thought she'd have a better chance making her money back by trying to sell her remaining inventory. LuLaRoe just said, well, we can change policy whenever we want. It doesn't matter what your contract says. That was such a slap in the face. I wish those people that are signing up to sell it would like call me. They could, they could just take over my, my business. I'll just send them everything. I've heard some whining lately also about well, my inventory stale. No, you're stale. Your customers are stale. Get out and find new customers. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> <laughs> so this seems like the problem <laughs> where is all your stuff anyway the rest of it where are all your racks did you sell everything when you no i still have all my racks i still have all my racks <laughs> i want to sell my racks <laughs> i thought about like seeing if the goodwill wants to buy them people started going every time i buy leggings they rip why would i continue to buy lularoe so a lot we lost a lot of customers just because of that I always, always said, no problem, exchange it, no problem. Then I would have a box full of holy leggings if someone would send them back to me, or defects, smelly ones, wet ones, moldy ones. I remember trying to get my, my money back or my credit back so that I could buy new things and just going round and round with them. I started to see the scam for what it was. And I, I started to, to realize, like, I can't be in this. Okay, let's. She says she only got four shipments of bad items, and she never showed any pictures. She showed perfectly fine leggings that had no mold, and then also a wrinkly receipt. <laughs> Where's the evidence? And it's not a scam. Yes, it had quality issues. Um, does that make it a scam? Like, it, it is kind of like. Maybe they should have respected some sellers more, but I don't know. Let's keep listening. She was always down in the garage selling below the road. And then I was always stuck with using, my dad. Are they using kids? Are you serious? Ha! Oh my gosh, you guys, please listen to this. He's a nice guy, though. You weren't stuck with him. I know, but... <laughs> it's just not the same, huh? It wasn't the same. Yeah. I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. It's a personal decision. The end. It was my sponsor who called me and had a 45-minute phone conversation and turned me around. She was like, just give it until the end of the year. Christmas is coming. Elegant is coming. There's so much good stuff coming. You're going to miss it all. I was like, you're right. You're right. I'll stay. And I came home and my husband's like, did you quit? And I said, no, I, just, I told her I'd stay for three more months. And he goes, what are you doing? You just have to quit. So I sat down, I wrote it all out. Everything that I felt, I handed him the iPad and I said, proofread it if there's any misspellings or weird, and then just hit post. And he just goes, post, and like just goes back to like, he was watching the news or playing a game or something. And I was like, it's done, it's posted, it's out there, it's on the internet, it's for real now. Like, I'm done, I just announced immediately within 15 minutes i got a text message from my sponsor how dare you do this to me how dare you leave without telling me i said oh i didn't know this was about you all right cool so that friendship is gone ruined it's heartbreaking and then it happened mm -hmm. with another person someone that i thought actually cared about me the more I spoke out, the more I shared my story, the more friends unfriended me. It's just, it's, 
it's mind games. What story is there? They got a couple shipments of bad clothes. <laughs> I want to see that post that you posted, Roberta. It's cult mind games. Alright, I'm gonna put this over here so you can dry, okay? Okay. That looks great. Thank you. And then I mean I've got pieces that are hard to let go. Like I actually wore this more than one time. And there's just there's I guess there's memories attached to some things because Oh my god, what is this melodrama? <laughs> Please get rid of it. It's ugly. <laughs> I actually wore this more than once. And there's so many emotions tied to it. Girl, get rid of it, please. It's ugly. I spoke in this when I was in Detroit, I believe. And so there's that memory attached to it. <laughs> this is a couple thousand dollars worth of clothes. Then I have clothes in my twin's bedroom closet. It's just overrunning everywhere. When I went on the coach. Why do you have all the clothes? Get rid of it. Hello, you can sell it in any single place and probably for 50% off or even more. You can still get some money back. These people don't think like in entrepreneurs for sure. Just retreat and felt ashamed because I didn't have a, my husband there and I took myself shopping and bought this Louis Vuitton purse. It was my first ever like really big purchase. And um, it was around $4,000. And then these fobs alone were, I think like 275 each and. Wow. This, oh my gosh. Who would pay for this ugly ass purse? 275 for a piece of metal? $500 for this? Obviously, these people do not were not smart with their money, and a, probably a little bit bitter. I said, you know what? <clears throat> I'm buying for the stuff myself because I worked hard. I worked so hard for this, and um, I was so proud of myself. But I'm saying, yes, treat yourself, right? But like, look, why is she so emotional about this? She's sad she doesn't make the same money no more. I was able to do this. I was called by Dan to speak in Detroit and Indianapolis. They said to meet in a hotel restaurant for dinner. I see Dan and her son talking about what they're going to split. And Dan looked at me and she goes, the reason we split meals is because our stomachs are really small because we've all had the gastric sleeve. Dan had surgery 23 months ago. And uh, how many pounds did you lose, Dan? I've lost 72 pounds. 72 pounds. She goes, you know, my sister Lene coordinates it all. We, me and her will work with you. And you go to Tijuana, you have the gastric sleeve, then you can come back to my house the next day in California, and then we'll fly you home. How many people did... Earlier in the interview, she said that this person was like her mom. So, I mean, you guys know girl talk, right? Like, yes, if you get a surgery, you'll be like, girl, get it too. It was easy. They were trying to make this, like, whole culty thing happen. I've seen it. I've already read an article about this. Um, I don't know. Do you know they had uh, done surgery with Dr. Michelle? Um, we have lovingly and excitedly referred to you to, I think we brought, brought down, I think, 18. I counted the other day. 18. Dan actually added me to this group chat called the Tijuana Skinnies. And it was people that had gone down there and they were thinking about going down there. Just like everyone going down to Tijuana or Mexico to go get some BBL, South America. Are those, all those people in a cult? I mean, I would say the BBL thing is a little culty, right? Everyone wants a big A, but small ass thighs. Um... But, yes, surgery like that is pretty popular, and people talk about it, especially women, if they want to lose weight. But they're trying to make, like, an issue out of nothing. Anything they can basically grasp. 
Courtney says she felt pressure to undergo the gastric sleeve surgery from Deanne and her sister Lene, both in and out of the alleged Tijuana Skinnies group chat. Lene, I mean, she was texting me every day. Courtney, we've got to get you on the schedule. I'm taking six people down there. Um, we have room for one more. Let's go ahead and get on the schedule. They had hyped me up so much to feel so beautiful. And I was looking in the mirror, going, they're looking at me. And I'm fat. And I need to have this surgery to be like them. I need to be monitored because of my medications. And so my sister actually was the one that said, Courtney, why don't you try the Orbera balloon in the U.S. first? They put inside of your um, stomach and they take it out after six months. It's non-invasive. So it retrains you how to eat right. So I went and had the Orbera balloon put in. Two days after Christmas, I walked down my stairs and I looked at my husband and I was like, and my eyes were like rolling all around. I was like, I can't walk anymore. We got to the doctor's office and he said she needs this removed immediately. The next thing I knew. That seems like it was your choice. She asked you to come to go get the gastric sleeve and you decided to get this balloon for some reason. Seems like it was a you issue, but let's go ahead. Now I woke up. Now I remember looking around and thinking, I woke up. I woke up. I am alive. So, of course, on the Tijuana Skinny's thread, people were asking, how's the Orbera balloon going, Courtney? How's it going? And I said, well, I had to get it removed. I had a really bad reaction to it. And I get a text from Lene, Deanne's sister, who said, see, I told you it wasn't going to work. When can we get you down to Tijuana to have the gastric sleeve? Thank Thankfully, the price included removal, but I literally caught the 7K in one week. No pun intended. <laughs> Well, when you're up to it, let me know and we'll help you have the gastric sleeve down in Tijuana. I don't know. These seem like these are planted. Are these even real? And I was thinking to myself, lady, I just about died. But you don't say no. You do not say no. And I said, well, I need to heal a little bit and then I'll, I'll get on the schedule. So she would text me like every week or two and I'd be like, I need some more healing. Eventually she had to lay off the text because I think I had strung her out enough where she knew that I wasn't going to go down there. Next thing I knew, I was kicked off the thread because I hadn't gone, obviously, and gotten the gastric sleeve that I was taking off the text chat. Mom, we're going to have to go through the boutique room too. I just... I'm sure no one was forcing her to have a gastric sleeve. Because of public scrutiny, LuLaRoe decided to change their bonus structure to abide by FTC regulations in July of 2017. Bonuses were required to be calculated based on clothes sold instead of clothes bought. After the bonus structure change, okay. Sony's bo That sounds good. Um, yeah, so the FTC will regulate and they see, see you doing something wrong, they will tell you to correct it. Um, that makes more sense to be... to keep track of Close sold, then close bought by the sellers. Bonus checks started dropping. She felt Lularo was no longer a sustainable business for her. October 2nd of 2017, I uh, was officially the first mentor to leave Lularo. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. Probably 150, 150 to 200 pieces. So this is probably probably about 4,000 worth of clothing for $15 each average. My lawsuit against them is for 50,000. I think they realize a lot of these things can't be sold and nobody wants them. I don't know if they were able to pick what kind of leggings they wanted. I'm sure a lot or the majority of the population would not buy these. Or maybe in whatever this was, 2016. But I wouldn't buy this in any light year. Thousand for what I owed. And had I sent my inventory back, that would have been another fifty to seventy thousand dollars. I look back and I was like, that's what I used to make in a month. Now I can make that stretch for a whole year. We were always told, stick with it. Your bonus check is going to keep going up. And that's what I believed. And it did. It did for a while until it started dipping back down. And that's when he really got scared. And that's when I started trying to, like, you know, really budget more than. Had I been smart, I would have been doing that from the beginning. But 
We were told to live in lavish. You hear? You hear? She spent all her money. Mm, and she was made to have a gastric sleeve and made to spend her money. That It's all your choice. Lifestyle. You see how she was spending her money? I, I don't know if anyone's forcing you to spend money and live outside your means. To drive nice cars, it would attract more people. You were encouraged to take your teams out to dinners. I remember I spent $10,000 on a dinner one time. We were taught and encouraged to spend every month, so we would be dependent on that next bonus check. What? So we couldn't leave, in my opinion, which was a cult. Courtney has since filed a lawsuit against the company, alleging breach of contract, amongst other claims. After leaving LuLaRoe, she invested in her own boutique, which added to her mounting debt. <laughs> I could never pay myself for the goods that I bought back because I thought the money, the money was going to come back to me and I was going to be able to pay myself back in my credit cards. All her mistakes, right? How's this Lula Rose fault? It, you'll see this repeating problem of victim mentality. Victimizing oneself. They forced me to spend all my money. Where are all the receipts? No one's telling you to live outside your means except you. You thought the money was there for, to stay. And you didn't capitalize. You didn't invest. You just spent, spent, spent spent your money and i had to make the decision to let my house go seems like it's her fault i'm sorry but it's her fault hey uh, i'm jacob with ty realty hi courtney all right She doesn't even look like she's packed up. Like that guy, that realtor guy just came through and just... Okay, like just slammed it. But you see everything's still in her house. Well, even if she did lose her house, I mean, she... there are people with spending problems in the world and they want to blame everybody else for their spending issues but themselves. They forced me to spend my money. They forced me not to save. They forced me and my kids out onto the streets. No, you did that. You bought a 4,000 Louis Vuitton bag and two, two 275 metal rigs. Do you see how much crap she had in those rooms? Yes, I, I can pretty sure, pretty sure this lady has a shopping addiction. And also probably a little bit of hoarding too. You see all these boxes? Get it together, get it together. Lulu's <coughs> mission is to improve lives and strengthen families. For Courtney, Roberta, and Deborah, it was a chance to feel like somebody. But beyond the colorful marketing materials and the promise of great success, Lulu didn't live up to the hype. Now, numerous articles cite other dissatisfied sellers. Thousands have taken to Facebook groups to vent about their own experiences. In 2017, there was a class action lawsuit brought by former consultants against LuLaRoe, alleging the company lured them into a pyramid scheme. The dispute is ongoing and currently in arbitration. In 2018, 
Ularo's clothing supplier filed a lawsuit for a breach of contract, accusing them of owing over $33 million for unpaid merchandise. The lawsuit is ongoing. So, it just seems like there's a lot of bad things happening in this company at one time. They had a rise and then they had a fall. It's not a pyramid scheme. And, um... The supplier wasn't probably getting paid because they were selling. There's some kind of issues, quality issues happening between the two, and there's probably just not an agreement. Hold on. This I um, well, you probably didn't even notice, but I had to pause it real quick because I ate vitamins without eating any food. Bad experience. So let's just finish it up. We have like two minutes. In 2019. The Washington State Attorney General filed a lawsuit claiming LuLaRoe's business model violated the state's anti-pyramid scheme law. That lawsuit is also ongoing. Yeah, I'd like to see some evidence, uh, or basically the outcome of these cases because I'm pretty sure nothing happened. LuLaRoe is still... In business I believe and nothing that they're saying makes me think it's a pyramid scheme so yeah overall there have been more than 35 lawsuits against the company for various legal issues six years after LuLaRoe began they're down to 35,000 consultants but continue to actively recruit people into the community I don't think women will speak out yeah there's nothing wrong with recruiting. They're going to keep doing their business because they don't have any stores. They um, depend on sellers. That is the whole thing behind MLMs. You have a workforce and you don't have to have a brick and mortar store. They obviously have less consultants. The hype has gone down. Maybe people are displeased with the company and it all makes sense problems like this happen in companies it doesn't make it a pyramid scheme yes there are unhappy people it's not a pyramid scheme because they are afraid they're afraid of losing their friends they're afraid of losing their family they're afraid of being singled out by LuLaRoe and I think the reason that I'm not afraid to speak up is LuLaRoe already took everything from me what I need is real information. What did they take? Roberta, you, in this whole interview, you did, didn't say what they took from you. You quit because of a couple shipments. And that was basically all that you had said. And you're focusing on working and your kid had to play with her dad while you were working. Nothing that serious went on. What did he lose? $5,000? Um, that was just your initial investment, too. So she didn't really say how much money she lost. And she still has all her Lula Road things for some reason. So. Information at this point. That's what I need. Not smoke and mirrors and, and unicorn fairy dust. I'm not going to sway someone from leaving. But if someone asks if they should start Lula Road, I'll tell them they're absolutely crazy. guys so hopefully you can you can see a little bit of roberta in here um she a little cuckoo i don't know what her thing is but obviously she's trying to really push this narrative there's a, a, many interviews like this of hers and articles and sh it's all over her tiktok it's all over the internet what is she trying to do and for what she n really didn't say anything that serious to make it seem like it was a pyramid scheme it's like she really has it out for this company she wants to push out it was a cult it was a cult i was part of a cult nothing screams cult it was just a business that was a hype and now it is not the hype people invested they lost money because they weren't 
good at what they did or weren't smart and saved the money while it was all the hype. Um, they thought money was forever. It's, it's a common problem. People aren't really good with their choices. Not everyone is. A majority of people aren't than are. That's just the human condition. All right. Next. <laughs>